here we have a six foot four inch grand piano from 1872. About there, yeah. Yeah, this is a Bluthner made in Leipzig, Germany. And this was restored 10 years ago in this shop, and now it's back. Nice rosewood. Yes, it's finished. It's about six foot four, making the parley grand. Uh, it's got 85 notes, ivory key tops, and it's finished in a variety of rosewood. I'm not really sure which it would be. It's got a nice two tone character and the nice black lines that are so favored in Rosewood. We did basically a complete restoration on the piano about, as you said, about 10 years ago. It was at that time finished in lacquer. which has lasted pretty well. There's a few signs of aging, but all in all, it's been a stable finish. Lift the lid here. Being European, they seem to have saved the most dramatic face for the underside of the lid. That's where the really showy wood is. Everything else is kind of a reserved pattern. What percentage of originality do you think this is? Well, it's uh, as original as we could make it. Um, the original soundboard has been removed, recrowned, and reinstalled with proper crown throughout. And uh, the bridge caps were all consolidated. So I believe this one's original right down to reusing um, the original bridge pins, which is a story in its own, but uh, the piano is basically free of false beats and one listen to a recording will show you that it's quite lively all through the scale. Yeah. The wires used are Palello Type Zero wire. Um, it's a softer grade of wire, more appropriate to the era when the piano was made. Uh, it makes a great difference in the, the purity of the tone on these older instruments, because the wire needs to be pulled up to a certain stress level to sound nice. Wire too strong in the wrong environment it takes on a harsh tone. So the new Palello wires have proven quite a nice addition to the restoration of these older instruments. The original damper felts have been retained washed, <laughs> blundered as it were, and reutilized once they were made nice and soft, which isn't really such a great leap in that uh, you know, nobody throws out a cashmere sweater just because it's gotten a little dirty. 
So a little care. The old felt can be brought back to a delightful softness and efficacy as a damping material. Uh, let's see. Um, okay. okay, what we see here is the pin block. And the pin block, um, it's built to the original configuration, but it has to have been la largely replaced because, well, these older blocks, they, they were under quite a, quite, a, quite a deal of strain and uh, being made out of solid bits of wood were a bit over-engineered for their own good. But we made a good facsimile of the block using a great deal of uh, well this one the upper parts are made from a Steinway upright side that was the most beautiful piece of quarter sawn maple you ever saw is that this instrument? I had the Steinway side, yeah. And uh, it's a beautiful hard wood, so it makes these pins feel incredibly strong and firm. But the uh, secret to longevity for this instrument was the introduction of a wrought iron apron on the underside of the block, which we'll show you when. Uh, we get the action out. Like I was saying, the veneer is matching. The, the veneer that they used on the edge of the top, you can see the dark lines. Everything goes right through the middle, right over the bevel, down the side, and then through the leg. Same with the top, too. It flows up the key bed, key slip, the fall board. Up to the top. Yes, the same. And I think it goes down here. the back. I think so. Same type of wood. Same anyway. veneer went over here like this and up. Up to here. They matched everything. The entire back, the whole entire spine there has been re-veneered, so that particular artistic detail could not be preserved. What made it particularly difficult was this is beveled here. This is not square. This is rounded here, which made it a pain in the neck to put on. You know, if it was flat, you could clamp it, but everything here had to be clamped with rubber to make it conform to the edge. <laughs> it's all round. Oh, it's, it's the rosewood rounded. molding. It's 19th century furniture making it as fine as it is. It's a little uncompromising. I don't remember if we have to replace some of this. I think we did. But, it, but we yeah, did this whole side. This whole. This whole side was completely gone. The whole, the whole side here was gone. It fell off. Yeah. That veneer was shot. Well, no, right here you can see this is here's a perfect example. This huh. area, this area is well preserved. That out there had trouble because that's where it had to be taken apart. But if you look right here, you can literally see. The veneer line, the the figure of the veneer. I, I think we did from that. there remember, up to there. I remember yes. this was off. This is all one slice off of a tree through here. Right, but and this they, was off. This was missing. That's from a square grad. This is from a square grad. All of this. Um. Oh yes. <laughs> that was the one piece of veneer we had that Only matched this one piano. One piece we had. Then you you sliced it up right and applied it right because. We did. Yeah, we ran, matched it up, see, went right through, past the bevel okay. and over the, the molding. And that's the way they did it. Now, you know, the professional guys who are looking at these blue smears are going to say, oh, no, no, that's original. Well, you know, no, it isn't. Well, then, you fo if you fooled me, you did good. This is from a square grand, maybe 1880s, 1870s square grand. Because this is basically the same technique over here, and this is original. 
We have the pictures. We have we the will pictures. Have those faces here. Accessible. It's a nice detail. The people that put this together were, oh, the woodworking skills were oh, just beyond what you could imagine. And, you know, the frugality. Using the expensive slices for us like that. Centennial right next to you. Okay. That's slices of rosewood that are 10 feet long now. Here's the outside. Now we can take a look at the action on the inside. Okay. Now this is uh, the action out of the 72 Bluthner. And it is what is known as a patent action a kind of articulated jack action. I think if you look down in this hole there you can see the basic principle of the action at work. There is on the key in here, you can see right there is a little articulated jack whose tip pushes into the underside of that shoulder on the uh, abstract attached to the hammer so pretty easy to see the teeter-totter working here to raise the hammer and as it gets close to the strings there's a little button in the back that moves the jack out from underneath that shoulder and the hammer is free to strike the strings and come back down and check as opposed to blocking and making no sound. So, and this is by and large the original action from this piano. Uh, there are a couple of modern parts that had to be pieced in where the originals were just completely beyond repair, but if you look, there's quite a number of them here that I went to the trouble of putting back the, uh, the material. And this piano's been in service for 10 years now, so very confident with the repairs. hammers themselves, of course, had to be replaced. And what those are, are a set of hammers from Ronson Piano Hammer Company. And since this is a very old action, the hammers aren't anywhere near the size of modern hammers, so in a very fortuitous turn, I had him make a set of hammers for a spinet tiny little upright wrapped in the uh, their softest bacon felt and it came in very nice they're just about the right size they're just about the right weight and everything was able to be dialed in nicely I like the tone I like the way it plays so that was a success as I said it's got of course, we've had to repair the ivories, but it's got still got a nice set of ivories on it, nice set of ebony's, and uh, I think it works just as good as the day it was made, and I'm told it plays well. Okay, we're down inside the action cavity of the 72 Bluthner, and, you know, it's not terribly revelatory as it is, but what it is, as you can see, you know, it has a nice standard back action. 
in nice clean condition. Uh, what it's not real readily visible, but these are um, hinged on vellum. It's an interesting aspect of this piano. Okay, it uh, preserves that uh, almost medieval period uh, system where something like this, uh, its hinge is actually a thin piece of uh, leather, you know, parchment leather. But thing about them is, you know, they do hint, they do work a long time and they're very quiet. Curiously enough, this thing is mounted on brass hinges, which is kind of modern for its period, but it was in good condition, needed to be rebellumed, so it's got all new hinges and such. But, uh, yeah, that's just putting back what was there. Now, what's of concern, we can use this to let us see it a little better. This is uh, the underside of the pin block, seen through the mirror. And this is what we call the apron. It is a sheet of what? I think it's only um, maybe three thirty seconds thick sheet steel. But what we've done with it is it's attached to the bottom of the pin block along its full length, or most of it, and it bridges the gap between the underside of the pin block and the under edge of the plate. And what it does is it stops the pin block from shifting downward at all, which was kind of their, their fatal flaw, because the instant it shifts at all, it applies irresistible forces to the upper edges of the plate, or the upper edges of the block, and makes them less able to resist. Therefore, you get a little more movement, a little more damage, a little more movement, and slowly these three-quarter plate open face blocks had a tendency to uh, degrade. So we installed this as a means of stopping that you know, arresting the moment of that force to keep it stabilized. And, well, this has been in here for 10 years. The piano's been kept up to pitch very um, faithfully. And the tuning on the piano is rock solid. So we consider this a success. Generally, we try to be very, very faithful to the original design, and we were in this piano. If you were to uh, get a look at the inners of the pin block, we did follow Bluthner's philosophy. It's even got the piece of channel stock, iron channel stocks reinstalled behind the, uh, the stretcher. but. This was an engineering necessity, and, well, what we try to do when we have to make an alteration is to make it as subtle as we can, reversible if necessary. This can be taken out, and uh, unobtrusive. So we didn't have to change the action in any way. You don't have to change anything because this was put in, but it... Uh, seems to have given the, uh, the system the little bit of uh, reinforcement it needed to be stable. So, as I said, this piano was restored 10 years ago and the pin block is just ducky. So, that's...
Here's our nice brass inlaid name on the fall board. Heat blued screws, original tuning pins, re-blued. Every piece of hardware was taken out of this instrument and cleaned and put back in. Hand drawn pin striping to match what was originally on the plate. The lid hinges are hand forged from a blacksmith. Nice custom little leather buttons. Lid lock. Solid rosewood handle. The brass is still shiny. It's all coated in shellac to protect it from oxygen. <laughs> 